welcome back to another Boxman devlog. I hope you guys are all doing well. As for me, progress has been steaming along at a rapid pace and I managed to get a lot more work done on a lot of things than I previously thought I would. But most importantly, we finally got our first ability in the game, the Magnet, an ability that allows Box to repulse objects and attract themselves towards metallic surfaces. Though before I show anything and say any more about the Magnet, I want to show you some of the other features I've added. So this is editing Steven, I've just uploaded Devlog Zero and I realised something. I never said what software I'm using, so just quickly, I'm using Unreal Engine because yay, Lumen makes my game look pretty, Blender for my 3D modelling and animation, though the other guys will be using Maya, and Substance Painter for all the pretty textures. Now, back to the video. First off, wow, the reception on the first video was insane. Thank you to everyone, and I'm not gonna lie, I was extremely terrified to put out a video, since I'm not very good at talking to myself when it's not just incoherent garbage that helps me think when I'm working. And secondly, thank you to everyone who commented on the last video. I got a lot of encouraging feedback and plenty to think about now. I got a couple questions asking about my lighting, so I'll go over that quickly. As I said before, I'm using Unreal Engine 5 and its wonderful new Rave Traced Bounce Lighting Lumen. And I also decided to bring up the skylight brightness, which essentially makes my shadows a little bit brighter, just because I wanted to make the player a bit more visible uh, in these dark areas. In combination with that, I have height and volumetric fog, which I've pushed quite a lot in the main menu and the demo level, as I wanted to create this feeling that the player is inside this dusty warehouse. Some light foreshadowing to the story, but you're going to have to wait until we finalise the main beats and know we're going to stick to it before I discuss it in a video. As well as creating these cool accurate light shafts that break through the trees and objects, which helps to ground the scene more in reality. Another thing I forgot to address in the last devlog, which would have been good for the level length feedback, was the game scope. This is a medium sized game, which my definition of that being that the player is able to complete this game within a 6 to 8 hour time frame, around about on their first time playthrough. This is not accounting for any of the backtracking to gather any missed cosmetics and 100%ing levels. My thinking for the level lengths was given the optimal route, what would be a good amount of time to complete the level? And from the comments, I did see quite a few people saying that it was a good amount of length. So for now, I'm gonna keep it as so. But thanks to everyone who commented. It did give me a lot to think about now. <laughs> as sometimes one of the most underrated elements of game development, in my opinion, UI elements sometimes get forgotten until the last moment. And most of the time, it shows. And yes, I've been extremely guilty with this in the past as well with my previous projects. So I wanted to get around this curve by starting to at least ideate and implement some of the elements as soon as possible to see how it fits with the current gameplay. And of course, everything you're seeing now is heavily under development, but I wanted to opt for a more alive feel for my UI elements, having them rotate, bob and change colours when they're interacted with, as seen with my points menu and main menu. I do feel for the text that it's a touch too exaggerated, so I'll probably dial it back in the next devlog, but it gives you an idea of what I'm going for. With the points menu, when the player gains points like this, a small squish animation is applied to the points counter as well as a colour change and sound effect, just to provide additional visual feedback that the point was indeed collected. Just as an additional side note, I've also made it that the packing peanuts, instead of just exploding into particles when the player collides with it, Instead, a small animation is played where the peanut jumps into the player's backpack before particles burst out. This system is also applied to the costume collectibles. I was originally going to show this off in the next devlog, but I saw a few people comment about some enemy redesigns that were actually surprisingly similar to what I had already started making. And since I've now completed these enemy redesigns, I just thought, eh, might as well show you guys. So. I've changed the designs of the robots to be more metallic and plastic, created with random stationery and household items rather than just another cardboard character which helps them stand out more. This robot is comprised of a whiteboard marker lid and some discount non-lego wheel and axles, with the battery being held on by some looped tape. I've also added a screw bolt and some small piece of random metal to create a single brow to convey more emotions of the character.
Now, I know what a few of you might be thinking. Stephen, what are you talking about? From the footage you showed in the previous devlog, the objects barely seem to block the camera. I'm sorry to say, but I did some nefarious movie magic to hide some of the horrendous camera bugs I had. From the camera snapping extremely close to the player to rapidly jittering around objects collisions, it was nauseating at best and downright unplayable at worst. So this was definitely high up on my to-do list. I knew I wanted this system to only apply to the smaller objects within my scene, like trees, rocks and mushrooms, as these were the main contributors to the problem I had mentioned before. I originally opted for a full object fade-out component system that could be dragged onto any static object and when the camera moved over these objects, the entirety of the object would disappear. The main issue I ran into though was if I make the fader opacity only around 0.125 or 0.25 when multiple trees were overlapped, the component wouldn't account for this, which meant that with enough stuff in the way, the player would be fully obscured once again. So then I opted for full transparency, which just made people confused when they couldn't walk in certain directions. Then they'd move the camera to realize they were trying to walk into an invisible tree. I eventually then came across a way to just make a sphere mask around the player, which allowed me to have full visibility of the player regardless of the amount of objects in the way, but also still allow the player to know what's in front of the camera. I'll play around with this sphere size, but I'm happy with how it's working so far. Now onto the exciting stuff, the magnet ability. Essentially I want the player to run over an ability token, or something similar as you can probably see it's extremely work in progress and it gives them a specific ability in this case the magnet also visually a work in progress right now the magnet ability is a helmet that will temporarily override the player's hat and give the player the ability to attract themselves or repulse metal objects as you can see it worked flawlessly the first time i attempted to create it Attract repulse settings are toggleable, so you'll only ever have one option available at a time. My thinking is when you switch, the magnets on the side of the helmet will flip around and emit a different coloured particle, if active of course. I think as of currently, the attract option allows for a lot more new traversal and platforming opportunities with varying levels of difficulty, like having the player jump and attract themselves between metal objects. But the repulse, I'm only really seeing it used for specific things like moving a block upwards to push a button or repulsing metallic projectiles back to enemies. Actually, now that I'm saying that out loud, I've got more ideas for the repulse now. <laughs> so there's one thing about the attract that I do want you guys to comment on though. I currently have the attract set up so that with it being active, as soon as it detects a metallic surface above the player's head, it will attract the player to the exact point it initially hit. My thinking is that it makes the platforming a little easier for a younger or not gaming inclined demographic, but it does look a little strange when the platforms are moving fast like this one. My other idea was to have the magnet, once it hits a metallic surface, go directly upwards. If it hits the object, it sticks. If it misses, it shoots the player upwards. Not like really high, but enough to land on another platform. The latter option opens up more traversal options, but it does isolate those who may not have a particularly fast reaction time and could make some easy sections a little more difficult for them, but it could be remedied with a faster attraction time. But yeah, that's my thinking on it. If you have any ideas on which option would be better, please feel free to comment down below. A small thing that I wanted to add to the game was giving the player a greater feeling of presence. I wanted the player's movement within the environment to respond in a somewhat realistic way, so I added paper deformation. So when the player walks along roads, raised paper areas and within grass, the paper that Box is standing on will bow to meet the ground below, giving Box a greater sense of weight within the world, in contrast to his almost weightless appearance in the previous devlog. I also decided to update and add a couple extra idle animations for Box, just because I wanted him to feel a bit more alive rather than just staring blankly into the abyss. Well, that's everything I've worked on since the previous devlog. Everything that I wanted to show you in this devlog, anyway. <laughs> Next devlog, I'll be showing the level select hub, where the player will spend their time buying cosmetics with points collected in game, choosing levels, and pursuing their physical achievement trophies. See you then.